The top story this hour, electoral board sets June 5 for upcoming general elections. An Ethiopian World Bank signed a $100 million financing agreement. A very warm welcome to our Disney News Hour. I'm Solomon Danye. Thanks for joining. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demeka McConnell said the government will take strong action against criminals while committing atrocities against citizens. According to Ethiopian News Agency, the National Council for the Prevention and Control of Trafficking in Persons and Exporting Citizens is holding its 2013 annual forum. Speaking on the occasion, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demeka McConnell highlighted some have been committing atrocities against citizens in various parts of Ethiopia. He stressed that Ethiopians share and inherit rich values and everyone should stop and think about where this problem is going. Demek also assured that the government will take strong action against the perpetrators of the massacre, but all efforts and cooperation are still needed to prevent and stop the crime, he said. Ethiopian Human Rights Commission urged the government to take legal measures on armored killers of civilians in Benshangul Gum State. The commission also suggested protection of the vulnerable segments of the society from further attack and immediate reinstating of the displaced. Sintayo Tamrat is more. During his interview with ABC, Ethiopian Human Rights Commissioner Daniel Bekele stated his commission confirmed there were recurrent inhuman attacks in the state of Benshangul Gums. With ethnic based attacks in Metakal Zone and its surrounding, a number of people have been killed, including those over 100 civilians massacred on Wednesday. The armed groups exert some bush attacks on the civilians. They inhumanly killed a large number of people with bullets, arrows and other traditional tools. They also caused physical damage to others. Besides, they fired collected harvesters of the residents. A great many people have fled to the forest. Family members lost because they escaped in different directions. Mentioning that Metakalzon and the surrounding has been center of severe human rights abuse, Daniel went on indicating the urgency of providing medical and humanitarian aid to victims in hospitals and to the displaced ones. In certain areas, the attack was being exerted on Amhara nationals, but recently it was killed were many members of the Shinasham. In general, our Ethiopian brothers and sisters, including mothers and children, were killed. Before, we have been recommending a need to direct a concerted third billion a federal and a state government to curb the issue. So what is important now is to provide humanitarian and medical aid to those displaced and injured. Daniel further urged the government to take law enforcement measures so that citizens' rights and safety will be secured. Similar human rights violations are perpetrated for too long in a country because we don't make the violators accountable for their offenses. Hence, the federal and state governments should not take serious security measures in Benjingo Gumuz because the criminals have been repeatedly attacking and hiding themselves in the forests. This must stop now by bringing the criminals before the law. Consequently, it needs a strong secured measures. The commissioner stressed that relocation of the displaced people should also be paid considerable attention. In a related story, legal experts urge for a swift action to address inquiries raised by the majority with regard to the intermittent ethnic based violence rocking Matekal Zone Ben Shangu Gum State. Talking to ETV Amharic today, Fasil Slushi. A lawyer and public prosecutor said the government should come up with an ever everlasting solution to the problem. 
ሰሞን ነው የተፈጸመው ጨፍጨፋ በአማራ በሽናሻ በአገውና በኦሮሞ በሄሮች ላይ ነው The recent ethnic based violence in Bulan district of Benshangul Gumuz has focused on the peoples of Amhara, Shinasha, Ago and Oromo. So he is an example. So Shinasha is one of among the five ethnic groups in a region, but the Shinasha people itself is also attacked. On the other hand, the constitution says that every nation, nationality and peoples of Ethiopia has a right to develop their language, culture, learn with their language and being governed with their language as a fundamental right. But it needs proper attention when we implement those rights unless it could be a source of conflict. Apart from the constitutional problems, I think we have to investigate our economic, social and political problems because they may be able to a source of the attacks. Fasil urged the government to find a comprehensive solution for ethnic-based attacks witnessed here and there as a human rights violation. Genocide is an international crime wherever you go. And if one commits international crime, he can be judged in accordance with the international criminal law. So this indicates that an ethnic-based violence is in the eyes of Ethiopian and international law. And here, even in Addis, it also created a shock on every one of us, though the problem is occurred there. Therefore, I recommend it to the government that to be taken an everlasting solution, just like the law enforcement that was undertaken on the TPL Funta by the government immediately. The Somali regional estate expressed its condolences about the loss of innocent lives in Bulan district Metakelzo. The state chief said the regional government is working to take all necessary measures along the federal government on those organized destructive forces in order to ensure the safety and security of citizens. Calling on the government to continue its crackdown on the perpetrators, the regional government expressed condolences to the bereaved families and the people of Ethiopia. Meanwhile, Chief of the Harari State, Otin Bedri, expressed his sorrow over the attack on innocent civilians in the Matekal Zone, Benshango Gum State. In a message posted on his official Facebook page today, the president wished consolation to the families and friends of the deceased. He expressed confidence that the government's action against the culprits would be strengthened and the community would support. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission said at least 66 people were killed in the series of conflicts that recurred in Consul Zone in the southern regional state from November 10th to November 21st, 2020. The Commission today released findings of an investigation carried out from November 22 to November 25, 2020 in Haibena and Aide Kabales, as well as the cities of Arba Minj, Gidole and Karat. According to the Commission, 39 people were also injured, several houses and other property burned and more than 100,000 people displaced due to the conflicts. The conflicts, which resulted in gruesome killings, injuries, displacement and property destruction, show that the human rights problems in the area still awaits sustainable resolution, the Commission said. The Commission recommended corrective measures to be taken after the appropriate investigation into officials within government structures who directly or indirectly inflame aid or aggravate the conflicts or fail in their duties to protect civilians, improving the measures to control the reportedly increasing transfers of illegal firearms in the consul zone area is also a critical part of the ongoing efforts to prevent further conflicts, it added.
A good Ghana player is both strong and skillful. You have to... Welcome back. You're watching uh, this news hour. The National Electoral Board of Ethiopia has announced a tentative date for the sixth general elections. During a consultative forum held with political parties today, the Electoral Board proposed elections to be conducted on June 5, 2021, across the country, except in Tigray State. Abtam Shagra reports. The National Electoral Board of Ethiopia announced today June 5, 2021 will be the exact voting day for the upcoming of the sixth general election across the country. Chairperson of the National Electoral Board of Ethiopia, Butukan Midexa, said the board has been relentlessly working to undertake free, fair and democratic election across the country. As part of this move, the National Electoral Board is finalizing its preparation to hold a referendum request that comes from four zones in the southwestern region, the chairperson said. <laughs> Based on the request of the House of Federation, we are ready to undertake the referendum concern that comes from Dauro, Konta, Bencheko, Sheka zones in the southwestern part of Ethiopia. This is the one feature that aligns with the upcoming election in this region. In general, we are ready to undertake for the upcoming general election for the Parliament and the State Council at the same day and time across the country. The board has also preparing to undertake the election in Addis Ababa and Redoa city administrations on June 12, 2021, she stressed. <laughs> We have identified another time schedule to undertake the election that focus on two city administrations. This election will be held after a week due to many reasons. Thus, we are trying to remove the overlap problems to organize both the parliament and the state council in these two city administrations. Uh, yeah. At the interim administration of Tigray State request, the National Electoral Board of Ethiopia has decided all electoral time schedule activities are excluding the state of Tigray. It was noted. And in business, Ethiopia and the World Bank have signed a $100 million financing agreement. The agreement was signed by State Minister of Finance Yasmin Mohabrebi and World Bank Country Director for Ethiopia, Sudan, South Sudan and Eritrea, Osmani Dion. The additional funding will be used to finance the Women Entrepreneurship Development Project. The project has been providing female entrepreneurs with finance skills and services they need to grow their businesses. Inclusive growth and economic empowerment of women and youth are at the center of Ethiopian development agenda. The newly approved 10 years prosperity plan prioritizes women and youth equitable access to economic opportunities such as financial services, human capital development, as well as training in professional life skills. Hence, I am very confident that this project will contribute to the government's SME development, job creation, financial inclusion agendas by tailoring financial instruments to the needs of 
women entrepreneurs. The reason why is this additional financing, which we have doubled from 50 to 100 millions, and which we are signing today, has four objectives. Objective number one is to alleviate the impact on women-owned enterprises that have been adversely affected by the pandemic. Objective number two is to encourage the financial sector to support viable women-owned enterprises. Objective number three is to scale up the pro provision of funds and business services to viable women-owned micro and small enterprises. And the fourth objective, which we at the World Bank do pay also due attention, is to reconfirm the World Bank crisis response strategy for Ethiopia, especially through our commitment to women economics empowerment. Addis Ababa Chamber of Commerce and Sectoral Associations held virtual discussion with its Chinese counterpart, China Chamber of International Commerce, Chongqing Chambron, on how to forge partnership. Ethiopian Consul to China, Antenna Tariko, highlighted long standing ties between Ethiopia and China and Chinese companies' engagement in Ethiopia's development activities. Secretary General of CCOICCC, Leo Li, to his part, explained to leadership of the Addis Ababa Commerce and Sectoral Associations about duties and responsibilities of his organization and expressed interest to invite its Addis Ababa counterpart to trade fair and exhibitions that take part that take place in China. He also vowed to offer technical support to Addis Ababa Chamber of Commerce and Sectoral Association on implementation of digital business data system and to arrange working visit for its professionals and leadership in China. So the two uh, also have decided to sign a memorandum of understanding so that they will work together in several areas of cooperation. Expats and ambassadors of various countries extended best wish upon the coming 2021 New Year. Shifara Laiko has compiled this message as follows. We uh, wish uh, the economic growth in this country will be continued. Actually, just uh, 2020, was, uh, it was a little bit troubleful for the older world. But uh, God says uh, we will wish for the world and as well for Ethiopia, to everybody, to the, have a um, beautiful, uh, bright, new year as 2021 uh, has a and the uh, people uh, here we will wish to all all of to ethiopians and us as for the world for all our uh, diplomatic community i wish you a wonderful uh, new year and uh, merry christmas uh, thank you so much so wish you a uh, merry christmas and a happy new year Here's thank you to say to stay put in the interest of Across Africa, families are struggling with a difficult dilemma of whether to gather for the holidays or to stay put in the interest of public health. The pandemic's economic impact has also left many cash trapped during the traditional giving season. From Kampala to Harare and beyond, it's like to celebrate Christmas during these strange times. Take a look.
still Christmas is Christmas. You definitely have to go to the village and spend it with your parents and sisters. Hopefully we'll go and see um, the grandparents in the rural areas. If the situation remains at least stable, so hopefully we'll be allowed to travel. Well, that's it for the news for me, Solomon Dying, and the rest of the English team here in the studio. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.